Hey guys, Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra here. Today we're gonna cover drop ship and procurement special order processes in SAP Business One. Before we get started, I just wanna say, check out www.battleshipcobra.com for my crystal reports for SAP Business One course. It can go, it can bring you from not knowing anything about crystal reports to being great with crystal reports. So you can check that out. Also SQL for SAP Business One. Same thing, you can go from not writing queries to writing your own queries. It's a great way to get started. So www.battleshipcobra.com, you can see them in the top. Also, uh, like, subscribe, share with another consultant, and hit the notification bell if you don't come to YouTube that frequently. I make weekly videos Mondays, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I also do a podcast. I'm releasing those on Wednesdays at like 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time podcast.battleshipcobra.com also they're posted on YouTube as well. Have you ever needed to do a drop ship in SAP Business One? Or have you needed to do a custom purchase order from a customer order? Maybe it's an item that you don't stock and you just want to special order it for the customer? Well, SAP handles both of those scenarios and I'm gonna go through them today and show you the difference between drop ship and procurement, and whether your procurement procurement is purchased or you do special make to order items where you wanna associate a production order, um, we'll cover all those in this video. Let's go. Okay, so I've made diagrams for the various scenarios. I've used draw.io, that is, you just go to the website draw.io, and uh, you could draw out these really neat diagrams uh, Adriano, thank you very much for this link. It's really useful and it's, it's helped me a lot. This was really quick to make and it's a really powerful tool. So the first process is a dropship process. If you're not really familiar with a dropship process, it means that you are selling to a customer, but your vendor is going to ship to that customer. So it's something maybe you don't stock, you don't want to stock, maybe the customer needs it really quickly, it's a real special order thing, you don't really care if the customer knows. Sometimes there's white label delivery too, so, so what that means is the vendor will ship to the customer and uh, not put their like name all over it, and sometimes they'll even label it with uh, your information, your, your packaging. So uh, the dropship process, I've done little diagrams here. Sales order is created. You use a dropship warehouse. The dropship warehouse is indicated as dropship. When you do that and make the sales order, it will make a purchase order from that sales order. So right after you do the sales order, it'll prompt you to make a purchase order. The purchase order will have the ship to address of the sales order, the customer's address. There's no inventory exchanged. You never take ownership of this inventory. You never see this inventory. You can proceed to your AR invoice on the AR side, and the purchase order will be invoiced to you. Okay, let's take a look at that. Sales order. Okay, I'm gonna use myself. Boop. Okay, so logistics, you can see ship to. 1234 Hornby Street, Vancouver. I'm gonna pick a Logitech keyboard. It is not superseded for the purpose of this example. I'm gonna make this ship being date 1015. <clears throat> I'm gonna switch this to the DS warehouse, which is the dropship warehouse. So you can see dropship is enabled. I've selected to manage serial numbers, you don't have to. When you go to add this document, you will forget the validation that you needed to do for the video. Click add. So it's going to pop up this base document type and this procurement confirmation wizard. You can cancel this, come back later, modules, purchasing, procurement, confirmation wizard. You can come back and do this for a whole bunch of documents. This way it's just doing it one document by one document. So. You know, if you're doing the one-off drop ship, this is a really good way to do it. So you can see here, it's just for this one and it's prompting you automatically. So it's just gonna do this one. It could be other ones too. 
next. It can be multiple base documents. I had another one there that isn't done. Next, I'm just gonna do it for this one. This is, this is gonna do a purchase order. You can pick the vendor yourself, but this will use the vendor from the item code. So if this had a preferred vendor, if it didn't have a preferred vendor, you can select it in this screen, but this one already had a preferred vendor and it picked the preferred vendor's uh, price list unit price for that item. And it picked the delivery date that was selected on that sales order as well. So you can do a couple different things here. You can create it as a draft document instead of a real one. You could do it as a purchase quote, purchase request. Um, we'll show, I'll show you the other scenarios uh, another time, but this dropship one is usually gonna be a purchase order. You can't drop ship a production order. So this, in this case, drop ships would only be purchase order. Next, we're not gonna do any consolidation. You can if there were multiple rows. I'm gonna switch next suggesting what it's gonna do. So it's gonna make an order for that, for just that single item. It's done that item, so we can see, or done creating that PO. So now you're gonna see this purchase order, you're gonna see logistics, the ship to address automatically is set to the customer's address. It is very nice. Oops, ship to, ship to, boom. Um, if I go, if I go back here, logistics, yeah, ship to, ship to. So we're gonna look at right click, relationship map. That's not relationship map. And you're gonna see that it is officially related. So you're gonna see the whole, the whole system, sales order from to PO, and you're gonna see all the documents link themselves together. It's really neat. So again, in this one, you would just invoice that sales order and you would eventually be uh, invoiced for the purchase as well. So you can finish off both of those chains, chains of documents. So the second scenario here is very similar to the third scenario. So I'm gonna do both of these at the same time. So this is a procurement that's not a drop ship. You are going to take ownership of this particular item. So same thing, the start point is a sales order. You check the box for procurement. I'll show you that. It auto prompts you to do a purchase order. Again, you can do these in bulk or one by one. The PO will actually be addressed to deliver to you. You do the goods receipt PO as usual and you'll get your AP invoice as usual, but you'll use that custom special order item to fill the delivery for that customer when it arrives. So again, this is usually a special order item or specially created item or something like that where you wanna relate the sales order to the purchase order. Production is the same thing. You can see sales order, checkbox, production order, receipt from production feeds the delivery to go to the AR invoice. But this procurement document just auto links that particular row to a production order or a purchase order. So same thing, modules, administration, sales, AR, what, well, modules, sales, AR, sales order. I'm gonna make another order for myself. Battleship, Cobra, pew, wow. Whoa. One, two, three, four. 10, 15, 10, 15, same item. This one has a superseded part. We're gonna say no. So you can do this to whatever warehouse you want. If you have multiple warehouses, you pick it for the one that you want. Um, we see here that PO is, we're gonna check it. So the original column name is allow procurement document. So I like to do it checked row by row. You don't have to do this document by document. You're probably more familiar with the logistics tab. I normally hide this if there's B1 up. So. You could check all of the non-dropship warehouse lines, or you can uncheck this and it won't prompt you for anything. Procurement document for non-dropship warehouse lines, then procurement document for dropship warehouse lines. It's pretty standard that this is, this is always like how it's, well, this is usually how it's done. If you check that, it'll just check all of the boxes in the whole document, but you can just show the system field allow procurement document. I just renamed this as PO. Um, and, and then it's just simpler. And then you just check this box. So once this box is checked, we click add. You can see the same thing comes up. 
just for this one document, click next, same thing. Click next, this is gonna be a purchase order. If this was a production bomb item, the only difference here is that it would make production orders. It would suggest that you do a production order there to order it. You can select the vendor, this is the same vendor, and you have the same pricing and setup and stuff. Same consolidation. So you can see here that it's not gonna ship directly to the customer, it's gonna to ship to your warehouse. So that's the big difference between a drop ship, the drop ship scenario, and the procurement scenario. So same thing as the other one. If you look at the relationship map, you're gonna see both of the documents there. And as each one is delivered, or as each one is received, then you're gonna see the documents move along in the process. So that's it for the dropship and procurement processes. There is a lot more to that to set it up for how you would like it to operate. But that's a nice little preview of the functions and features that would allow you to do dropship and procurement for regular items or for special items or for any case where you wanna automatically generate a PO for any of your items, whatever scenario that would be. My name is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. Check out battleshipcobra.com for my crystal reports for SAP Business One course and my SQL for SAP Business One course. I produce weekly videos Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Also check out my podcast, podcast.battleshipcobra.com. Thanks again so much. See you next week.